Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Begitte, and I've been looking very much forward to being here today. I will be talking about co-creating a better and more sustainable tomorrow in the mission that we are on uh, at SPOR. But before I start out, I would just like to do a little bit of research. How many of you are wearing leather shoes? Good. How many brought a leather bag? Good, thank you. Okay, so we um, are actually, I'm representing the last leather tannery in Denmark. In the past, we used to have a lot of tanneries. Now, we're only one left. And uh, some years ago, uh, they started at that time to look into traceability. Um, how could we enable brands to know exactly which provenance and everything about the raw material that the brands are using to create your shoes or bags, your cars, your furniture. And that led uh, Scanhide, which is the company, into uh, traceability, um, this chapter. And I would not be here today if it wasn't for technology, because it's actually due to laser technology that we are able to create traceability. So I will do it very, very short. Um, we are able, it actually all starts at the farm. So all cattle within the EU get this little ear tag in their ears within 20 days after birth. And we laser print this unique number into each single hide that we receive. We source our hides from Scandinavia, Germany and Holland. And we're able to actually identify a unique hide and connect it with the ear tag of the cattle. And in between that, we hold a lot of data. And this data is super valuable for the brands because it's actually their assurance, their guarantee that they're able to document exactly where your shoes came from, under which conditions the products were made, and you're able to create the whole journey back to, to farm level. So at Spur, it's actually all about data. It's about traceability. So we have our production facilities on Funen, and they are world masters in doing amazing premium leather, which they sell uh, to the leather international leather market. And at Spur, we are able to provide the exact data behind each piece of leather. This is some of the headers that we've been facing or the leather industry has been facing in the past. We see a lot of different tendencies at the moment in the fashion industry, in the furniture industry, in the lifestyle industry, and in the automotive industry, where brands are looking towards alternatives to leather because we have had some challenges in the industry. And we're here actually with a solution on this because we're able through our data to provide security and transparency on leather. So we can document exactly under which uh, animal welfare conditions the, the animals grew up under. Uh, when I speak with brands, they ask about biodiversity. They ask about soy strategy. They ask about animal welfare. They ask about climate impact. And we are actually able and capable of providing these pieces of really, really important data through our traceability technology. So we are able to identify that this is leather coming from Danish cattle. We've been to the farms to make sure we're able to calculate this. And then you might think, oh, have you really assessed so many farms? And that leads me into just a little bit of uh, background information. Spur is a part of Scanhide, which is the tannery facilities and production but Scanhide is 97% owned by Danish Crown. So we actually use and reuse the data coming from the farming and from the uh, food industry. And we're able to actually point out which pieces of data and information would be valuable to the fashion, to the lifestyle and to the automotive industry. And we're able to provide that on their specific orders when they buy our leather. So we have looked into a lot of different uh, technologies in order to, to create this. And I, I just want to mention the fact that we have existed for one and a half year. So we are actually a small startup, very small startup, 
Um, but we are able with our solution to provide something valuable uh, for brands uh, and in consumers. So right now, at this stage, we see a lot of discussion also within the EU about uh, product passports. Uh, traceability is a huge topic in the fashion industry, also in the lifestyle and furniture industry. And uh, we hope that we would uh, be able to, to solve some of these big questions and insecurities where we are actually able to move brands away from believing something on their raw material to knowing everything about the raw material. Um, we have launched uh, some different collaborations. I'll get back to that uh, very soon. But um, we also have another mission. It is to really use and help brands also commercialize some of the data. So we actually think all the way to end consumer when we are co-creating together with brands. And it's also a really important word, co-creating. So when you talk about sustainability, I think we, all, we are all aware that we're just all parts of a huge ecosystem. And if we really want to progress and create and develop new solutions, we're, we have to think radically different. And that means that we need to co-create within the value chain. So from this very linear route in the past, where A delivered to B, B delivered to C, and we did not approach each other's customers because I spoke with you and you spoke to him. Our mission is really here to try to disrupt this way of working within big global value chains in the fashion and in the lifestyle industry. So here we find solutions together with the brands because I'm not able, able and capable to delivering traceability and transparency on the final product, but together with the other partners within the value chain, we're actually able to create something that is really needed uh, for the future. I just want to address some of the consumer trends that has led us into this strategy. So data and transparency is definitely something that uh, we are very aware of. Uh, we see uh, consumers, uh, for instance, in China, navigating in supermarkets with their smartphones on everything, down to a banana. They scan the QR codes through blockchain technology. They access exactly where did this banana grow? grow? When did it land here in the supermarket on this specific shelf? Do I want to buy this? And I think if you have tried to uh, live without having the confidence and trust. Data and um, technology is an enabler to actually establish um, confidence and trust. So we strongly believe that we are able to provide a solution to brands which will uh, increase uh, the possibilities of actually selling your product if the customer is standing and have to choose between two products. The other thing we looked very much into is the fact, as I just briefly addressed, product passports, tra tra uh, traceability and transparency. So we all know that when we need to do a, a decision buying A or B, we want to access the answers pretty fast. And um, the time spent figuring out if you want to buy product A or product B is very, very short. And therefore, we need to provide all the data so the customers and consumers are able to take their, their decision. And then, of course, sustainability and climate is the primary topic in at least the fields that we are working with. Um, and, and we need to find some solutions. And therefore, we need to radically think very, very differently from how we used to think in this linear way of uh, collaborating in the value chains. We've been working with blockchain technology. We had the great opportunity to work together with Lifestyle and Design Cluster here in Denmark and CBS and their blockchain division, where we wanted to create an extra layer of verification and security on our traceability technology. So we built a blockchain and we invited and asked all the sub-suppliers in this project 
to provide data into the blockchain. So we coped up with a brand called Rockamore. It's a women's shoe brand. Uh, and actually, I'm wearing the shoes today. Here, we uh, wanted to demonstrate the full journey from the fields in Jutland all the way to the finishing tannery in Germany, to Tuscany, where the, where the boots are being made, and then back uh, to Denmark, where uh, Rockamore is selling their shoes. And now I just want to demonstrate how we actually use the blockchain technology because we also wanted to tell the customers about this transparency route. So first of all, we created the QR codes in the shoes, which enabled all the customers to access the data in the stores. Besides that, we did treasure hunts in Copenhagen, in Aarhus and in Odense, where interested customers or just Rockamore fans could go on a treasure hunt. And this was actually launched during the pandemic. So nobody actually knew what to do, uh, other things than going for a walk. So we decided to create this treasure hunt where they scanned QR codes, uh, uh, answered some, some questions, and they were able to, to, to win um, these shoes. So what we learned from the blockchain case is that we possess a lot of data. And it is super important to have the goal in mind that we are really managing the route to the finishing point with the consumer in mind. Because a lot of the data that we possess from, for instance, how much did the cow weigh or um, a lot of other stuff is not interesting for, for consumers buying uh, a bag or a pair of shoes. Um, we have introduced Spore and our technology and our leather uh, together with different brands already. One of them uh, being Fredericia Furniture, where you're able to buy and decide that you want to buy your piece of furniture in Spore traceable leather. It comes with a small certification where you can actually search and trace the leather being used for your products. Another really good example of co-creation is with a British brand called Anja Hindmark. She has been working on this Return to Nature collection for more than two years and wanted and wants radically also to change the mindset of what is luxury. So luxury is actually thinking regeneratively and thinking in a more sustainable way. So she designed a, a bags collection without any hardware. So no zippers, no buttons, no nothing. And everything went, um, um, we, we processed the leather in a new uh, way, with also with a new technology, which enables the leather to be fully biodegradable and fully compostable. And then you're suddenly really tapping into when you start co-creating with so many different partners within the value chain, we're able to create something very unique because this bag collection, once it is completely done and over in many, many years because leather lasts for a very, very long time. But at that time, you can actually place your bag in the garden it, and it will compost and it will actually add nutrients back to the soil um, which is really an amazing story, which we look forward to uh, working with, also with many other brands. Here in the end, I just want to finish up saying technology and digitalization um, is an enabler to create and co-create a better sustainable tomorrow, but the human part is so important that you co-create and find people, like-minded people who share the same visions and share the same values, uh, because then you suddenly are able to use technology to, to improve and not only go from A to B, but maybe go from A to E. So with that, I just want to say thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Vigita. Please give her a hand. So. So we're here today, and in a year from now, we're going to probably look back and say, oh, and then we had this case with Spore. So what's going to happen within the next year? Where are you going to be in a year from now?
in a year from now, hopefully we have launched with a lot of new brands um, and also it, would, it could be really amazing if we would at least be in a process with also with the automotive industry because they also definitely need traceability. They use a lot of leather for the nice cars. Well, we're looking forward to uh, following that. Thank you very much. Let's send her off stage with a hand. <laughs>